Good day everyone. So we are going to address our final topic for this class and for this module called persuasive writing. Today's class we are going to look at the final section of your persuasive piece which is known as the concluding paragraph. So for the previous lessons so far we would have con we would have completed the introductory paragraph which we all understand as the paragraph that introduces our topic in a very attention-grabbing way. It explains any information that is necessary for your reader to know before they begin engaging with the content so that they won't be confused or lost. And then it presents your three main points, which is your thesis statement, where you will expound on these three points later on in the body of your essay. We have completed the section for the body of the essay, which consists of mainly three paragraphs. Each paragraph is dedicated to expounding on one main point that you would have mentioned in your thesis statement. In the body paragraph, you begin to introduce your main point in a very forceful way, but yet at the same time, we take the time to explain any ambiguities or any information that we think is necessary for the audience to know so that they can move forward in the same logical thought process that we're developing in that paragraph. We explain our opinion, or as we say, our rationale, that follows the stance that we would have taken in our introduction. We use factual information to reinforce it the facts that are presented so that we can reinforce our opinion and reinforce our point. After we have stated our factual research, we will then restate that stance, restate our opinion and link the factual information to the logical thought process that we use in order to come up with our particular opinion. We use persuasive techniques when we are linking our factual information to our opinion because when we present language in a very strategic and tactful way, it has a lot of effects on persuading individuals or convincing individuals to hold opinions that they may not have necessarily held in the past. We then end our body paragraphs with our central statement where we reiterate our stance once again and we really reinforce what our opinion is all about. We repeat this process three times. In the third paragraph of the body, which would be the fourth paragraph of your essay, we like to include what is called the counter-argument. The counter-argument is the paragraph that includes your opponent's what we think would be your opponent's strongest point. Now you may say, why am I going to include the opponent's point? Will that not throw off my argument? On the contrary, it reinforces that you would have taken a logical, objective approach to contemplating the issues surrounding your topic, where you're even aware of the opposing arguments that others may have researched that others may have been exposed to. Then you strategically research information, factual information, that debunks or discredits your opponent's point to reinforce that you have done ample research and there is no better logical perspective than the one that you are presenting. By debunking your opponent's point, you have discredited their argument and reinforced your stance. You do so using same persuasive techniques and factual research as you would have used in presenting your own point. It is important that you mention transition words or transition phrases that act as signposts to guide your reader in understanding what sentence you're presenting and where does that sentence lead you down the road? Is it enforcing? Is it reiterating? Is it introducing? Or is it simply restating? 
All of these are introduced using special words, such as additionally, when we're adding more points. Furthermore, if we are opposing, we can say on the contrary, oppose us to this point may say. When we are reiterating, we can say to sum this up or in short, this paragraph has explained. There are many different phrases that you can use to introduce each sentence of your paragraph. And it is important that you use these transitional phrases and transitional words throughout your essay. Now we have come to the concluding paragraph. This is the paragraph that sums up everything that you would have done in the entire body of the essay. The concluding paragraph somewhat mirrors the introductory paragraph. Let me show you how. So the introductory paragraph would include what is called your introductory sentence. Yes, Kim, on, I see baby. I'm coming in a bit. It will include your introductory sentence. Well, your concluding statement has your concluding statement. That's the first sentence. Your concluding statement, your concluding statement is somewhat like your thesis statement. It includes the three main points that you would have extrapolated and expounded upon. Yes, Kaylon, I'm coming. Mommy is teaching. In the body of your essay. So much like your thesis statement introduces the three main points that you're going to address, your concluding statement includes your three main points that you would have addressed. Just as a reminder. Following your concluding statement, you would have your rationale. So much like in your introductory paragraph, you would have explained your rationale and your stance. It is important for you to reiterate your rationale, to reiterate the opinions and the relevance that is explained in the body of the paragraph, just so that your readers can get a refresher of what you said and why you said it. So after your concluding statement where you state all of the things that you would have said in your... Yes, baby, it's a cake. When it reiterates everything that you would have mentioned in your introductory paragraph, it reiterates what your reader should have learned or should know by the end of this essay. So after your concluding statement, you reiterate your rationale in context. So much like we presented our background information and context to let the readers know why they should know this information, we also reiterate our rationale in context so that our readers are reminded why the information they just read is pertinent. So you have your rationale and, okay, so that, that, that marker is gone. So we have our rationale and contextualization. Lastly, for your concluding statement, much like our introductory sentence that is there to grab the reader's attention, well, our concluding statement requires, our concluding paragraph requires that we leave our audience with a thought-provoking statement. So much like we wanted to grab their attention, this sentence that is known as the provocative statement or the provocative clause is meant to provoke thought it is meant to provoke thought in our audience so that we don't just leave them with the information but we leave them with a yearning to further their knowledge on the information or to further contemplate the points that we have presented with these five or so sentences, because our rational and contextualization can take up to two different sentences. With these four to five sentences, you would have your concluding paragraph. Let's see what that looks like. For the previous classes, I would have looked at Cornelia's submission on should teachers give extra homework? I used it for my introduction. I used it for my body. So naturally, I'm going to use this topic for my conclusion. This is what a concluding paragraph would look like. So we have our concluding statement. 
Our concluding statement begins, of course, with our transitional phrase. So I am going to use our transitional phrase in summary. Yes, baby. Sorry about that. In summary, teachers believe they are doing students a favor by providing extra work Kill on no baby, don't come. Go put on the pants. Mommy's teaching right now, okay? Mm -hmm. Alright, extra homework. However, as shown by factual research and first and experiences homework simply confuses students overworks both teachers and students as well as limit quality family and social time So my three, so the three points that Canila presented was that homework confuses students, overwork both teachers and students, and it distracts them or takes them away from other pertinent errors in their lives because of the excess work. I would have already stated the purpose of repetition as an effective persuasive technique in keeping the reader engaged in your stance, which as we can see, I use the repetition of what teachers believe that they're doing as a favor is actually detrimental to the students. So I stated in summary, teachers believe they're doing students a great favor by providing extra homework. However, as shown by factual research and first-hand experiences, so these were the two examples of information that I presented. The first one, was the research data by the American Psycholo Psychology Association. And the second one was the interviews by both teachers and students when they explain that they feel overwhelmed from the amount of homework that is given. So I re-mentioned the fact that I stated factual information from these sources. I mentioned my stance, which is Teachers believe that they're doing a favor, but in actuality, they're not. And then I mentioned the three points that I have stated. Homework simply confuses students, overworks both teachers and students, as well as limit the quality of family and social time. I am going to repeat again. What are some of the effects that I stated? Research data shows... Students and teach students are overwhelmed and often confused. Some are even disadvantaged due to lack of available resources to complete this homework. 
and teachers are in no better position as they as well suffer from overwork to correct the assignments. A task which takes away from their personal and social time as much as the students. All right? Now that I have restated everything, both the research, the effects, as well as my stance, I am going to leave my reader with a provocative statement now. Right? So I'm going to leave them thinking. It is clear that despite the benefits of having added practice no individual can aptly perform under stress therefore I believe students should not be given homework simply because one's mental and emotional health should be paramount to grades and academic performance. Okay? So my concluding statement, my concluding paragraph goes as listed. I give my concluding statement. My concluding statement looks a lot like my thesis statement. So if you were to envision your introductory paragraph flipped upside down, that's what you will have. So you'll have your introductory paragraph, your body, and your concluding paragraph. Think of it like a sandwich. So we have the top of the bun, and then we have the inside of the bun, the ingredients, then we have the inside of the bun, and then the outer side of the bun. That's how our concluding paragraph is. It's like our introductory, introductory paragraph flipped upside down. So our thesis statement is usually the last statement in our introductory paragraph. In our concluding paragraph, here we have. In summary, teachers believe they're doing students a favor by providing extra homework. However, as shown by factual research and first-hand experiences, homework simply confuses students, overworks both students and teachers as well as limit quality family and social time. That's my three main points. Confused students, overwhelmed students, take them away from quality time. Research data shows students are overwhelmed and often confused. Some are even disadvantaged due to lack of available resources to complete this homework. And teachers are in no better positions as they are as well suffer from overwork to correct assignments and tasks which also takes away from their social and personal time much like her, their students so that's my rationale i have deemed that because of the research that i have seen that everybody is affected negatively and i can't see the benefit in it then i have it is clear that despite the benefits of having added practice that's my counter argument because a lot of people will say, well, 
Whole marker is good for added practice. It gives the students the necessary practice that they need. It enhances their education. They're gonna get better grades when they do homework. Well, here I am saying that even though that I acknowledge that there are some benefits to having homework, no individual can aptly perform under stress, which is what I'm claiming, that homework contributes to stress in different ways to this, both the student and the teacher. So therefore, I believe students should not be given homework, which is my stance, students should not be given homework, simply because one's mental and emotional health should be paramount to grades and academic performance. So that's what I'm leaving my reader to think about. When we're looking at the benefits of homework, do we consider just the academic benefits where you have a good grade, but your mind and your emotions are all frazzled? Or do you want a well-balanced individual where they work with what they can do and the extra work that they need to put in, that it is used in instructional time, as is expected that you go to school every day at three, or you dedicate a specific amount of time to your education, Whatever practice needs to be done, you work assiduously, diligently in that time, and then you take the time to de-stress so that your mental and emotional states are better balanced to make you more, um, more ready to learn and more willing to accept new information. So this is your concluding paragraph. As you can see, the research that you would have done in your pre-writing process where you brainstorm all of your information, you research your information, you categorize them, you organize them in a logical sequence. All of that pre-writing research and all that pre-writing work that you would have done would have basically cemented all of the main points and information that was needed for you to write your entire essay. After you have done that initial work, it is simply expanding on the information using well-crafted sentences, using your persuasive technique, and using those sentence helpers like transition words and so on to boost your presentation and your expression. But much of it, what you're doing is just repeating what you would have already researched and what you would have already done. This is how you write your concluding paragraph. If you have any questions, please feel free to message me personally or put them in the comments and I will address them. I'm looking forward to your submissions and congratulations, we would have finished this module on persuasive writing. We will begin our revision process and prepare ourselves for our examination on the 12th of December. Thank you very much for listening and tuning in. Have a good one.